um, recording is just okay the recording just started uh, welcome to the class today let's take a moment to pray and then we'll spend some time studying learning could uh, somebody please lead us in prayer this morning who wants to lead us in prayer Go ahead, yes. Sebastian. Loving Father, once again, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for speaking to us every day, Lord. And Lord, this morning, as we are here, Lord, to learn from your word, Lord, I especially pray for the pastor, Lord, you bless him. Speak through him, Lord. Prepare us, Lord, so that we will grasp all your words and store it in our life, Master, so that, Lord, will be a blessing to this world, Lord. We thank you so much for hearing us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, uh, Thank you, each one, for joining the class today. So, just a quick review. Um, last week, um, we covered uh, what I think is the, um, um, you know, like um, the the I don't know what to say. The core chapter, the main chapter. Um, that um, captures the essence of what um, we really want you to um, take from this course um, on how to exercise faith. So I'm just going to quickly review those uh, steps or the outline that we gave last week on how to exercise faith, because that's what we are going to do all the time in our lives as we're journeying with God, as we uh come into various situations where we are going to exercise faith in god uh, that's the pattern we're going to follow or the steps or the outline that we're going to follow each time uh, we exercise faith in god so i'm going to quickly review that and then today what we're going to cover is uh, i'm going to talk really uh, briefly uh, i'm going to talk about uh failures you know, so when we when we experience failures, which uh, uh, we will face, uh, how do we respond to it? Now, I'm not saying you know we have to face failures, but the the, the reason we address it is because we are all learning how to walk in faith, and uh, you know it's like a child uh, when a baby uh, learns to start uh, learns to you know walk. Uh, uh, initially, the baby might, you know, stumble and fall, uh, but that doesn't mean the baby can't walk. Um, you know, the, the baby gets back on the feet and the child gets back on the feet and starts walking. Maybe he stumbles a few more times, but then eventually uh, it's going to, you know, walk fine. Uh, and, and, and like that, even as many of us, we, we learn to walk in faith and... Uh, 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 sometimes we will stumble and fall. So what do you do then, right? So uh, so just a few words of encouragement on that. And then uh, we want to spend some time talking about collective faith. Uh, this is important, uh, especially because all of us are part of a local church, uh, you know, a, a community of believers, wherever we are. And uh, just as it is important for us to learn how to exercise personal faith, that means you believe God for something for yourself personally, there's also this aspect of collective faith where two or more people agree together and, and, and extend their faith together on the same thing. Uh, so we want to address that. And uh, uh, many times uh, uh, it is good to go collectively after certain things. Right? That means two or more of us join together and go after seeing something accomplished. Uh, as a church community, you know, there will be many people, maybe 10, 20, 30 or more people who collectively join together and say, we're going to go after something. So we will be talking about collective faith. So let me first quickly review uh, what we went through last week. This is just to 
uh, emphasize that uh, the lesson we did last week is uh, you know on how to exercise faith this lesson uh, is is uh, you know very important meaning because it just summarizes outlines for us gives us the steps we need to exercise faith in God to see results to see things happen in our lives so I'm just going to quickly review um, these steps so first we said you know, if we want to exercise faith in God, uh, we must have a desired goal based on God's word. So you're going after something specific for your life. Uh, and there's a goal that you're going after. Uh, and it can be anything, you know, uh, in your personal life, in your, uh, in your spiritual life. Uh, it's a goal that you're going after. And it's based on the word of God. It's based on the promises of God. And then... So you have the goal, then you be determined to have what God has promised. So you're you're setting your mind to it. You're saying, or we are saying, I'm I'm going after that. I've got to have it because it's in the Word of God, and if God promised, then you know, it's for me, and there's no reason why I shouldn't have it. So you're determined to have what God has promised for your for you, and then. Third step is to take the time to fill your heart with the word. You know, find certain scriptures uh, that uh, that uh, find the scriptures that are speaking towards that goal that you have, and you meditate in it. You put that word in your heart. Go after it. Uh, you know, keep doing it uh, over and over again, day after day. Fill your heart with the word of God, and then you pray and receive by faith. So by by prayer, say God. This is what I'm going after because your word has promised it and I receive it. I thank you. It's mine. I settle it in my heart. It's mine. Now, it might take us a little bit of time to arrive at that place, but that's okay. You keep praying, keep doing these previous steps uh, until, you know, you and I come to that place where we can receive by faith. Uh, another important part is we need to speak of our faith. So you begin to speak, speak into your situation, speak into your uh, life situation over the circumstance or and speak into your future if that goal is something uh, that is still out there uh, in, in the future uh, you know you speak to, speak your faith uh, declare what God has said um, in your life number six is you act in accordance to your faith you do what you can do you know whatever steps you can take uh, you begin to take towards that goal you know uh, whatever you can. You know, and of course, for different uh, situations, there may be different things we can do. Um, so whatever you can, begin to take uh, steps in accordance to your faith. And number seven is thank and praise God. You know, begin to thank and praise Him in advance. Even before you can see the result, you give Him thanks, give Him praise. Because you, because you settled in your heart, uh, He has promised it in His word. Uh, you and I, we are doing what we can do from our side, and we have received by faith, and we begin to thank and praise Him. Say, Lord, I thank you for it. And lastly, number eight, we stay in faith with endurance. You don't give up. You stay in that place of faith, right? Until you see the manifestation, until you see it happen in the natural, you stay in faith with endurance. Don't quit on that. So this outline, you know, this uh, you can call it eight steps of faith or, you know, eight principles or eight practices or, you know, I, I don't know what, you know, what name would be most suitable, but this is how we exercise our faith in God. And we try to put it in this simple outline for all of us. So let's move into what we want to cover today. Um, you know, like I said, sometimes we will face failures. And uh, I just want to share some thoughts on that uh, uh, so that we, we, we have the right perspective. And, you know, you pray for something, you're exercising faith for something. Maybe it doesn't happen. And, uh, you know, you, you, you know we, we wonder, like, okay, what went wrong? Because uh, it didn't happen the way I was praying or believing God for. Now, when failures happen, uh, our response, our, our thought process, should be the correct thought process is uh, that it's not because of God. So don't let's not blame God for it, right? Sometimes we try to blame God. Oh, 
you know, uh, God didn't want me to have it. Or um, see, if it's in the Bible, then it meant that God wanted you to have it. So he, you know, he already made the promise. So how can he now go back on the promise? So let's not, you know, put the blame on God because in any way he he made the promise in the first place, whether it's for healing, for provision, for for your success, for your protection, or whatever it was, he made the promise first. So he is the one who initiated it. He's the one who gave the word to us. So we can't then go back and blame him um, that uh, his promise failed because his promise cannot fail. His word is true. So we say, look, we're not going to blame God for it, but it's something from our side. You know, we are learning. Uh, we may have missed it somewhere. And uh, there is no single answer uh, on why uh, somebody may have missed it. Uh, so we don't want to speculate, but we just accept fact. Look, you know, we can do better. Uh, we need to find out where did we go wrong, right? And what can we do? Now pray and ask the Lord, Lord, where did I miss it? You know, and then the Lord will speak to us. He'll say, look, maybe he, he, you know, you didn't really believe what I wanted you to believe. Or maybe there was, you know, you, uh, maybe I was doing it out of competition with people. I was trying to compete with somebody else or, you know, my motivation was not right. Uh, or I was not operating in love or, you know, God will address that and then I can fix it and, then continue, continue walking in faith, right? I don't have to quit. Now, in, in that moment of failure, of course, we're going to be disappointed. Of course, uh, you know, it's not nice that, uh, you know, what I was extending faith for didn't happen. But what do I do? I, I yield it to God's greatness. I recognize that, you know, God is great. Even when I don't understand it, uh, even when uh, things uh, may be hard, on, you know, at my end, you know, God is great. God is good, and um, uh, He is He is God, right? So, who are, we are not here to challenge Him or question Him. Uh, second, I, I try to learn lessons. I say, okay, God, where did I miss it? What what did I do wrong? Where did I fail? You know, I. I learn lessons so that I ask God to teach me uh, where, uh, how I can improve my faith, how, what was lacking in my faith. Then I go back and put my focus on God and his word. You know, I, I, I don't, uh, because God and his word has not changed. Just because I experienced a failure doesn't mean God's word is not true or God is not uh, faithful to his promise. No, no. So I put my focus back on God and who he is on his word. This is who God is. He's God of kindness, goodness, compassion, faithfulness, truth. And his word is true. His word endures forever. His word is forever settled in heaven. His promises are sure. Not one word of his promises will fail. So I put my focus back on that. And I continue to walk by faith. And never quit. If you and I, we never quit. We continue walking by faith. So if and when we face failures, I just want us to keep these things in mind. Right? Remember, it's not because of God. It's because I missed it somewhere. So what do I do? I, I say, God, you're still great and you're still good. I try to learn lessons from my mistake or from my failure. I get my focus back on God and his word. Uh, don't change, don't try to change who God is or try to, don't try to change his word. No, God doesn't change, his word doesn't change. Just put my focus back on God and his word and I don't quit walking by faith. So let me pause here and uh, maybe we can have a little discussion. Uh, any questions on this? Any thoughts on this? Uh, I know this is not, uh, you know, it doesn't answer everything, but it's a little framework for us, some, something for us to think about. Keep in mind when we face failures, when something we've been, you know, believing God for doesn't happen. Okay, what do I do? How do I move forward? Uh, I've just shared a few thoughts on that.
And any questions or any thoughts that you, you would like to discuss on this? Yes, please go ahead, Divya. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, my question is regarding um, the persistence in prayer and uh, uh, like in, in uh, prayer and intercession course, you are learning of persistence. And uh, when, when we face such, you know, failures uh, like these, how do we, you know, recognize where, where is God's, you know, will in this, what is God's will in this matter? Should I keep praying for it or should I, you know, maybe it's not the right prayer I'm praying. So how, how will I know that? Hmm. Yeah, persistence in prayer, pursuing something in faith. And then when I should let go. Um, So I think one is if uh, one is uh, if we are pursuing something first of all that has been given to us by the word of God right, that's in the word of God you're pursuing something and uh, they're going after it in prayer based on the promise of God and if there is still the possibility, right, of the space, this room and this time for that word to be fulfilled, then I think we should continue persisting in prayer, uh, persisting in faith. But if that option is not there, and I'll give an exa give examples. If that option is not there, then I let go and I go through what I just said. That is, I said, okay, God, you know, uh, I missed it and uh, I'm not sure what went wrong, but I, I'm going to continue walking in faith because your word is still true. So let's take an example. If I am, uh, you know, we can think of different kinds of examples, but let's say, if in my, uh, you know, as as a professional, say I, I'm working, and I am, I, I want, uh, I've applied for a job, particular job, um, uh, job opening that's uh, in a particular company. So let's say I, I I really like to work in that company. I really like that job that's been uh, uh, posted or, and um, I've applied for that job and I am extending my faith and saying, God, uh, I, I, that's what I desire. I want that job. Okay. Now, uh, now I know God has given us in his word uh, and what would I do? I would use scriptures like this, like, you know, Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18, it says, uh, remember the Lord your God. It is he, he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with you. Now, God didn't tell me he's going to give me that particular job, but he did say he would give us the ability to earn, to make wealth, right? So uh, and as if I'm a professional, uh, that job is something I like. Uh, it's suited to my background, etc. And uh, I'm just praying, saying, God, give me that job. Because you promised, it's a general promise, of course, that he would give us the ability to make wealth. Uh, Psalm 37, verse 4, you delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know, or John 15, 7, you know, I abide in him, his words abide in me. I ask what I will, and it's done for me, right? So my desire, look, I, I desire that job. So I'm extending my faith for that job, you know, and then I go through the process, I submit my resume, I go through the application, etc. And, you know, eventually what happens, 
somebody else gets that job. Now, at that moment, uh, I let go because you know that that job opening is closed. So ob obviously, there's no point in me trying to persist uh, about that job. It's gone. Now, I was believing God for that particular job as an example. I'm saying. Uh, but that job is closed now. It's been given to somebody else. So what do I do? I'll let go. Right? Uh, there's, there's no need for me to persist in faith for that particular job. Uh, and I said, and then I say, okay, God, you know, I I, uh, I didn't get that job. That's what I wanted. I didn't get it. But God, I I just trust that uh, you know you will the, the, the word still the word, every promise that I've quoted is still true. I will not go back and change that pro those promises. But I say, okay, God help me, give me understanding of what would be really good for me, you know, what was best. And I want to grow professionally, I want to grow in this area. Uh, these are the skills I want to develop. And uh, so I, I, I don't get disappointed with God that I didn't get that job. I mean, it's what I wanted. And so when I say, okay, God, you know, where did I go wrong? I mean, maybe uh, uh, that that may not have been the best for me. Maybe it may have been the best job for me, but maybe I didn't prepare myself well for the interview. Or maybe uh, I really didn't have faith as I should have had faith for the job. You know, So I, I don't know where I could have gone. I mean, there are different reasons why I would not have got the job, but that's what I pray and I say, God help me, you know, help me to understand what went wrong. But I'm not gonna give up on the promises of God. I'm gonna continue believing God. And now it's okay, God, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm, this is the area I want to work in. Lord, open up a better job for me, maybe in a better a better opportunity, maybe in a different company that I may not know. But these are the skills I want to develop. This is the area I want to grow in, and I'll continue to extend my faith. So that's an example where, because it is a time bound thing, and because it's the job is closed, there's no need for me to persist in faith for that particular job. I let it go. I do this assessment, like I mentioned, and I continue to believe God for something to open up, right? Uh, or in the case of, say, you know, if I'm going to pray for somebody to be raised from the dead. Uh, now, this is a very, you know, a touchy situation because, um, okay, we, uh, you know, uh, a young person may have died. And we know that it is God's will for us to live out the full course of our lives. Uh, God doesn't want us to, you know, doesn't want our life to be ended abruptly, eh, 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 you know, at, at a young age. So it is, it is his will because his word says, with long life, I will satisfy you. Uh, he has also commanded us uh, to go and raise the dead. So that's that's a word he's given already. He's already expressed his heart. And so based on that, you know, uh, I'm stepping out to pray for somebody to be raised from the dead. Now, there's a time limit, you know, in the sense that uh, the body's going to start decaying. Plus, uh, legally, we are not allowed to keep uh, a dead a dead body, you know, at home or somewhere beyond a certain time. It's not right. Uh, and so what, you know, I have the time thing. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe God. But if it doesn't happen, I have to let go. And I have to say, okay, you know, uh, uh, maybe one day, two days. But then after that, I think it's not legal, at least here uh, in our city. Uh, we've been careful uh, to, to let, okay, after that, look, we have to go ahead and, bury the body. Uh, we can't just keep the body at home or do those kinds of things. You can't do that. So that's time bound. So these are just examples where it's time bound. Uh, I cannot persist beyond this time. But if I'm praying for, let's say, example, I'm praying for somebody to be saved. All right. I'm praying for that person. I, I, I'm believing God for that person. Now, I, I know that that person's will is involved. Um, I'm believing God. Now, even if that person person's uh, faith or behavior, go, I mean, person uh, who he says, you know, he goes from bad to worse, 
I will continue to believe God. Say, God, I really want to see that person say it. I'm praying, I'm speaking, I'm believing God for salvation. I'm praying for his salvation. I will persist. So we don't give up just because that person, you know, may, may in their behavior or in their attitude or in their beliefs may become worse. You know, just continue believing God. We don't give up. And as long as there is time to continue believing God, continue believing God. Right? Our example, even in the case of marriage, you know, when you know when when there's a marriage marriage problem, a husband and wife, and this is a situation you face often. Oh, you know, how do you counsel them? How do you help them? Uh, you know, in the beginning, you know, in the, uh, in, the, in the initial stage, okay. So let's say one is a believer, one is not a believer, or you know, maybe even both are believers, but. Uh, you're going to encourage them to believe God for restoration, for healing in their marriage. But it is dependent on both willing to receive help. But the moment one of them says, I don't want help, then we can't force. We can't force. So that's when I say, okay, let go. Right? Because up until that time, we can persist in faith. We can continue in faith. But then if one person says, I don't want to, receive help they, they've made a choice then we can't force why because god respects individual choice then we have to okay fine you know we can try to talk to them but if they're not open they're not okay then say look it's that person's made a choice and you can't you, we cannot manipulate somebody else's choice through our faith we can continue we can pray but that person has to be willing to receive help or you know, uh, be willing to be reconciled. Then we can work, you know, and help. So my answer to this question is simply, as long as there is an opportunity to continue in faith, then persist. But if, you know, if, if um, either time has ended or human will has put an impossible barrier as in the case of, like I said, a divorce kind of a situation, then, okay, you respect human will. So you respect the end of time. You respect the choice of human will. Uh, and, and then that's when you let go. So these are some things I would uh, share. Is that okay? Does that answer the question? Yes, yes, Master. Uh, I just, uh, uh, so I was just thinking of those situations where humanly we do not know. In those cases, we just persist in faith. That's what you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's, it's, uh, so in the case of a, um, so sickness, if it is a chronic illness, so, uh, uh, in that case, how can how, what what should be our action? Yeah. Mm. So in the case of chronic illness, all right, what must we do? We must continue to have faith, right? Continue to have faith. At the same time, encourage the person to do what they need to do, like you know, follow the doctor's advice. So, because you need to keep that person alive while faith is being built up in their heart. You see, here's the problem, you know, the problem, and I think we have shared this earlier on developing strong faith is, you know, we tend not to use our faith for small things, right? Then suddenly we hit a big mount, big thing, and then we say, okay, I'm going to use my faith. But it's like, you know, a person, and I'm just using this as an analogy, you know, somebody waking up and saying, I'm going to run, you know, 100 meters uh, at a competition. Uh, hey, but then we haven't been training. We haven't been running just regular races, but now you're going to suddenly jump into a competition. No. What do you need to do? You need to do the regular things first. Build up your faith. Build up your faith. And like we said, faith is like a muscle, right? You can't just walk into the gym and say, I'm going to lift up this huge weight, you know, these huge things of faith. No, faith is like a muscle. So what do you do? You start working with small things, small things. You build up, you build up, you build up your capacity to exercise faith. So, so you keeping that analogy in mind, when somebody is in a situation of chronic illness, what do you do? You have to build up their faith 
the you know over time you're building the faith so it's not like you know just one time you you know okay hear the word now let's 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 uh, do this you build their faith up now there may be those moments when there's a combination of things you know there is the word being brought there's the anointing and this there's the release of the gifts of the spirit and so on so uh, the miracle happens but we're talking about uh, faith building that person up in faith which which takes time so during that time, you just let the people, okay, you know, let them receive whatever medical attention they need. Keep feeding them with the word of God, with faith. Continue believing until they are able to receive the promise of God. Now, there are various factors that contribute towards a supernatural miracle. And, you know, we will learn this in our second year course on uh, keys to supernatural ministry uh, faith is one but then there are other factors like the anointing or like the gifts of the spirit or uh, the release of the presence and glory of god uh, so these are all other factors so uh, some, uh, 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 faith is only one of the contributor contributing factors towards a miracle uh, and that's what we are dealing with in this subject but sometimes there may not be any faith, but it's just a manifestation of the glory of God. A person is healed. Uh, sometimes it's just uh, the anointing of God that just destroys the yoke and you know, sets the person free. So there are various contribution, contributing factors to seeing a supernatural work. But when none of that is happening, what should I do? Well, I continue to tell the person to have faith in God and okay in the case of chronic illness continue to have the person have faith in god and let them receive the medical treatment they need because you're building their faith and then yet at the same time you're keeping them alive so that faith can be built and eventually you and you keep persisting in faith until you come to the place where faith comes to a place of maturity so that it can result in the miracle but while you're doing that, keep open to the other contributors to the miracle, which is the anointing of God, which is the presence and the glory of God, which is uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So all these other things can also bring about a miracle uh, during that time. So stay open and minister to that person uh, through various ways. Thank you, Pastor. That really helps. Uh, I just had a, I do not know how to put it, but uh, for for those things that uh, are not time bound, um, we are persisting in faith. But uh, doesn't that time uh, faith just becomes a, you know it reduces to a wishful thinking alone? Because we are not we do not know whether it will happen. So we are just um, yeah my my response to that would be our faith is based on the word of god right and uh, and our faith is based on who god is and what he has promised and if what we are believing for say in the case of healing who is god he is Jehovah Rapha. There's no question on it. He's our healer. What has he promised? He heals us. He forgives all our sins. He heals us of all our diseases. So to believe God for healing, to have faith in God for healing is never a mistake. It's never a wrong thing. Why? God is healer. And he promised to heal us of all our diseases. So we, we can never go wrong in that. So what we have to do is keep feeding on those promises that concern healing. Uh, same thing with provision, you know, for our lives. He's, he is Jehovah Jireh. He said, I will supply for all your need according to to his riches and glory. So you can never be go wrong when, when, when what we are believing God for is aligned to who he is and what he has promised, 
then we are on safe ground. We are not doing anything wrong because that's his word. That's what he put in his word. And that's who he is. What we have to do is to keep our eyes on the word. Then we are not in a place of, you know, we're not wishful thinking. We are aligned to God. We are aligned to his word. And uh, we will not give up on his word. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. That really helps. Thank you so much. Okay, good questions. And, I, and I'm glad we're having this discussion because um, um, the fact is, uh, this is an area where, you know, we all have, we all have challenges. And uh, uh, when we face these failures or when we face these kinds of situations, all of us have the same questions. You know, we, okay, what do I do? How long should I believe God? Uh, what do I do when, you know, something doesn't happen? How do I respond? These are questions for all of us. We all face it. So it's good that we, you know, we discuss it. Uh, we talk and uh, we, you know, we become clear in our minds on uh, when I must continue persisting in faith and when I must let go and uh, and just leave it. Now, I have to admit, sometimes there's a lot of emotion, emotions involved. And I'll give you one example. And I'm I'm not, I'm not saying this, uh, you know, to 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 to, you know, to what to say. I'm not saying this to you know uh, be bad to anybody. But I'm just giving this as an example. You know, many many years ago. Uh, there was a person who, uh, at that time, you know, she was going through a lot of, uh, uh, she was going through a very difficult time in her life. Uh, she came to church and then eventually we gave her a job uh, uh, in church office to work for the church. She was going through a very difficult time. Her uh, husband had left her, gone away, and this, you know, this man was going out with many other women so it's not like just one other woman you just you know you just think and she had uh, children and so it's very difficult and she was so emotionally you know uh, it's, it's a very painful painful thing to you know to live through that so you know we said so okay let's you know let's be there for this person so we gave her a job and you know she would she would work, and of course, a lot of pain she was going through emotionally. And, uh, you know, so initially, you know, I, I was a little careful, uh, okay. And finally, we got to talk about what is going on in her life. And uh, then she said, you know, this is what's going on. This is uh, what her husband's been doing, and he's gone overseas, and he's uh, all those things. Then I told her, I said, but she wanted her husband back. Now, it was difficult for me to say this, but I told her, I said, you know, you need to let go. You need to let go. Uh, but it was difficult for her. You know, uh, she continued praying, wanting to believe God. But I said, look, you need to let go. Why? Because this husband, he, he's making wrong choices. He's not willing to get any help. He is doing all these wrong things. And from the Bible, you have every biblical right to end the marriage. You need to let go. But you know, to arrive at the place to let go of the marriage and uh, end it, end it in divorce. I've been signed the divorce things. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. So I just had to give her the space and the time. The time and space. Okay. Let let emotionally she has to come to terms with letting go. Because this husband's gone. He's doing all kinds of things. He's not, not interested. So I just kept quiet. I just told her, I said, 
you need to let go and close this thing. There's no point praying and believing God for this because that man is making the wrong choices. His, it's his act of his will. He's doing these things, right? Now it took a long time. I think it may have taken, I don't know, I didn't keep count, but I'm, you know, I'm just thinking maybe it took five years or more for her to come to that place where she said, yeah, I'm going to let go. And then finally, she, I mean, they got the divorce done. So, and I didn't want to influence her faith. I didn't want to, in any way, do that. Because this is, this is a very personal thing, and it's very emotional, very painful. But I had to let her make the journey and come to terms that, look, I can pray, and there's nothing wrong with praying, but this is somebody else's choice, and my prayer cannot dictate their choice. I can pray, ask God to intervene, and so on, but at some point, I have to say, I'm letting go. So, so the reason I'm sharing that is because you know, this is a real life situation where there is faith in God on one side and that there is a human person making his cho choice, choosing to go some way. And I somehow have to come to terms with the fact that while I have faith in God, I cannot control somebody else's choice by faith. Right? And so that's when I need to say, I cannot persist in faith for this matter because somebody else is making a choice to go away from God and do really bad things. But it's not easy. It's not easy. And so we have to be patient with people. We have to understand people, um, support them, and so on. So in this case, you know, because there's human will involved. But in the case of sickness, and a person believing God for sickness, healing, in the case of healing, we know the word. And a person can believe God. In the case of divine provision, we know the word. You can believe God. But in the case where somebody else's will is involved, it's not easy, you know, and... Uh, that's where we have to uh, be careful, walk with wisdom, walk in faith, but walk in wisdom. And today, you know, she's she's gone abroad and, um, her, you know, so her life has moved, she's moved on and she's ha happy and she's, uh, she's fine, she's doing well. And, but that whole journey was very difficult. So, we will have a chapter later on that uh, uh, that talks about the boundaries of faith, meaning uh, we must understand that there are certain things we cannot do with faith, and one of them is we cannot manipulate somebody else's will. Right? Uh, we can believe God, we can pray, we can speak the word, but that person's will and their choice will ultimately be their choice. We cannot control somebody else's choice through our faith. We can help them. We can make it easier for them spiritually. But God has to work in their hearts to the extent that they are open. and God will work uh, and, and, and do it. All right, um, any questions on this? I know it's a little difficult subject, but any, any questions, any thoughts? Okay, um, thank you, uh, you know, for engaging uh, in, in questions on this. Let's uh, take a quick break, uh, we'll come back. And we will move into the next chapter, which is collective faith, right? Where and uh, where we 
uh, we discuss on how two or more can join together to have faith in God, right? So we'll talk about collective faith after the break. So let's take a quick 10 minute break. It's a few minutes before 10 a.m. here. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes and continue the class, okay? Thank you, everyone.